Anybody there? Hold on, guys. Uh, let's see here. All right. Um, okay. Hey, guys. Larry Carp here. Um, there's a topic that I always wanted to talk about, and uh, I never felt comfortable talking about it because I didn't have the Torah information out there, you know, and now that I have the Torah information coming out about why we're alive and how we fulfill that purpose properly, the purpose of life, um, and forgive my appearance, I don't mean to be, uh, I'm real dressed down and even shaven, I'm just, I only got a, a little while to do this, and I just want to put this out there and see what you guys think about it, and it's mostly for my uh, musician friends, but anybody is welcome to see it. Maybe someone's got some ideas. I want to give you some information so you can give me some information. I'm going to give you uh, things that I've thought about over the years. I'm 54 and I've been thinking about music my whole life because I'm a professional musician. This is what I do for a living. Of course, now with a virus around, I'm out of work, but except for these, uh, these, uh, what do you call it? Um, performances that we do, I put the, a little tip thing on the bottom. Uh, I, I don't mean to be rude or pushy, but uh, I am out of work and I got nothing coming in. So if any of you are wealthy and you appreciate our music, my mom my mom and my and I, when we perform, if you can put something in the tip cup, I appreciate it. I don't wanna, if you guys can't afford it, you're more than welcome to just view the, you know, our performances without paying anything. I don't want, you know. To impose on anyone, but I, it's starting to get a little rough now. I could see the, you know, bills have to get paid, and uh, Hashem helped me up to a certain point. But maybe, I mean, if He guided me to put that little tip link there to my PayPal account, then there must be a reason for that. But hold on a second. Okay. All right. So I'm going to say this is my understanding of music, and I've organized it into categories so that it could be easily understood and digested. Hold on, let me make sure I'm on. Anybody there? All right, I see some of you guys. All right, all right, just stay with me, and let me get in there. Hold on a second, everything's okay? All right, hold on. All right. Let me say this first. Um, you know, everyone always says music is a language. I went to a college, we studied music, I went to University of Miami, and I remember looking at the big curriculum book when I went to choose classes and everything, you know, when they had everything in there, I saw performing arts, visual arts, I, I, and I didn't quite like that term because this is, I guess, a performing art, but, um, well, I organized all that too. But let me, let me just say this, a language, what is a language? To me, a language, any language, whether it's verbal, nonverbal, or somewhere in the middle, like music is, we'll get to that, uh, a, a, a language, what we do is we try to describe reality using words, right? And I guess the one who, and sometimes it's a challenge between two people to see who can, or more, to see who can describe the reality the most accurately. That's one thing, you know, I study Torah and I don't know if it's a challenge between the rabbis to describe reality accurately. Maybe it's to report the right way to fulfill the obligations to serve our creator. So that might be the way that is, but um, uh, so let, let me start from the beginning. I only got under an hour here just to, to I'm going to give you all my categories of understanding, and, and I think there are five levels of how music could be, how it is and how it could be, uh, and, and hopefully I will... By giving you this information, I'll get you guys thinking. And I mean, there's eight billion people out there with minds who, and everyone has different life experiences and this and that, and you guys can take your information. You know, I was watching a show the other day and I saw two things that they missed and I could probably help them uh, actually. You know, it's funny, I'll mention it actually. It's the Oak Island show. I saw that Oak Island thing. And I, I saw two little clues that they don't quite understand because they don't come from this background. And I even presented it to my rabbi because uh, I, I can only understand it up to a certain level. So um, 
and I know he's immersed in that kind of thing. So he, I said, if anyone, Rob, could, could do this, handle it, I'm sure you could. So I gave it to him, and I'm waiting for an answer back. But So like we could all help each other, and we're stuck at home. So, so I'm going to give you the levels. I, I, I think music can exist on five levels, okay, or, or maybe it does in practice. And I think they correspond to the five levels of pleasure that Rabbi Noah Weinberg once taught. He said there are five levels of pleasure, the lowest being physical pleasure, then love, then meaning, then power, then being one with God, okay? So I noticed just today, actually, that, um, and, and I'll try to say this in a practical way and why this came about. I'm jumping around again, but just bear with me. I'll touch everything, every issue, and get to it. But um, when I go to a concert and I'm paying money to see someone perform, I mean, I'm a musician, but I sometimes go to concerts, and I rarely like to pay money to hear anybody play. I mean, I hear everybody on records. That's just my own personal thing. Forgive me. Maybe when you study the the performing art, you kind of feel like, I don't know if it's a sense of entitlement or something, but it's sort of like, I don't know if, I don't, I don't even want to say it's an arrogance either. It's more of a, it's more of a, I guess I know what to expect, and if I don't get what I want from my, from my money, I don't feel right paying for it. And I, I'm going to give you some of those issues of why I feel that way. That It's all here. It's all basically here. Um, so if I'm paying to hear someone, I'm listening, first of all, are they conveying the message of the lyric? And like, say there's a singer and a pianist. So I'll, and I was thinking of having my mom come in and I'll demonstrate what I think about when I'm trying to accompany. And I'm not a master at this instrument yet, but I'm working toward it. But I have this, I think my head is more advanced than my fingers. And I know what I have to practice, but it's just getting the time to practice. And Hashem sometimes don't give me that time, doesn't give me the time. But, um, I think it has to do with, uh, well, I'm sorry, let me get back to this. So, so if I'm listening to a singer and a pianist, I want to hear them convey the message of the lyric, and I want to see how the pianist is helping that singer convey that message, and how are they both logically and um, uh, organically developing to the conclusion, to the message, to the climax. And I thought we'd take the song All of Me, uh, which I, I know pretty well with my mom, we've done this many times, but I want to break it down sentence by sentence and then try to create a work of art. I've been waiting to write an arrangement on this tune and I've been, you know, um, playing around with it and really looking at the lyrics, what do they mean, and I haven't really seen it in context of the show. Usually that's always a good thing. You get the, get the Broadway show or who, for whomever it was written for, you, you, you go in there and you try to, you know, get the character, you know, for whom the song was written, and then you understand the lyric better. Sometimes I see a line and it don't make any sense to me, but then when I know the character, oh, that's what that meant. All right, so that's that. So let, let, let me start from the beginning. It, it's kind of very, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's very methodical, and I don't want it to be too dry, so I just gave you that little intro right there. So the line, so. A language descri describes reality. Music is the language of pitch, right? And now we have, we're in um, Western, these are Western instruments, so it's 12 pitches. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then it repeats itself, right? So there are 12 pitches, and then, and that's in space, so you have space and time, right? So time is subdivisions, 1, 2, 3, four, one, two, three, four, I could, I could, and those groupings of, say, four beats, uh, that's called meter, right? So I can group uh, those four beats, um, uh, sorry, I can, I can play them at any speed I want. I could be slow, one, two, three, four, or, or medium, one, two, three, four, or fast, one, two, three, four, 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 and then how you subdivide those beats is also, um, an issue of concern, all right? So, all right, so now, um, all right, so this is a view of music. With this view, I believe that we can create music that is clearer and more meaningful and moving to the listener. And we will be able to make every piece that we perform a work of art. That's from the musician's point of view. And hopefully we will give the listener the transcendental tingle. See, I couldn't say that before because 
I didn't, not everyone's on the same page with God issues and stuff and the purpose of life. So now I feel a little more comfortable. Now I can introduce all these thoughts I've had about music all these years, and you'll hopefully understand them more. And I could also teach you the purpose of life and make reference to things, and, and it all makes sense. So now, there are these five levels of pleasure, right? And, um, okay, so the, the, the first level, the physical level, you can have someone subdividing time very well. And it, we, as musicians, we, we musicians, we call it swinging hard. You know, it's, so as a, how can I, uh, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> notes are not logical and meaningful and it's just swinging hard so that's like a physical level of pleasure and I've been to plenty of concerts where that's all that exists it's just this physical level of pleasure and it's a nice level of pleasure my, my job as a musician is to give the listener pleasure I feel I mean that's what seems logical to me um, I'm trying not on the highest level what, what would I say this for any action in life any endeavor, whatever the endeavor is, like um, whether it's eating or or, uh, or playing music, so and then there's the why and the how of it. So the why is to help us to fulfill the purpose of life properly. So I couldn't say that before. Either. The the why of any activity is to fulfill the purpose of life properly. The how is by giving information, motivation, pleasure, and healing. So uh, now some of these ideas, not specifically that one, I was just thinking of something that some of them aren't, not, not that they're not checked out fully, but they're like half-baked ideas and I still got to, that's where you guys come in. So I'm going to give you the info that I have so far and hopefully light a spark inside you that you'll, oh, all right, but what if it's this? <laughs> and then you'll comment, give me the ideas, and then I'll think about it and weigh it out with the Torah ideas and hopefully... Well, let, let me finish this, and you'll see. Hopefully, we'll get to the highest level of music. But music used to be used to bring prophecy, okay? And, um, you know, I'm taught we're here to strive to become immortal, where we don't die. Okay, let me check, make sure I'm on. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on, guys. You with me? Okay, okay, stay with me, stay with me. All right, it's not going off. All right. Um, so it always perplexed me, and I've, I've read in the Torah various places where the prophets would use music and people would play, I think it was on a harp or a lyre, and all these different, all those ancient instruments, and um, uh, you know, I, ne it never, I, I never saw a source that said how they played. So from a musical standpoint, I could only guess, you know, and then I, I can only compare it to the way music is played nowadays, right? Um, I hope that, I think music pl is played on the first, the two bottom levels in this generation, the way I hear it, and then hopefully this information will bring us up to the third level. I hear, I hear, I hear physical pleasure, I hear love. I, I rarely hear meaning, meaning, meaning that it's logical and logical and, and it develops organically and it, it makes sense. And, all right, so, so that's the third level. I hope to, after this little sharing, we'll get to that medium, that middle level, the third level. And then after that comes the level of power, which I need a little help from you. I haven't really thought through this completely. I, I've touched on it in my head, but Hashem never lets me really sit down with it. But there's a power level where you actually, you're so in control of the vocabulary that you... You can, you can, you know exactly what you want to say. Like I'm speaking now in English, I guess I have some control over the vocabulary. I find myself fumfering on words here and there, and I don't take my time. I wonder how these newscasters at night, they speak so fluently, and I don't know if they're using a teleprompter. I think they're just speaking from their heart. So I'm trying to speak from my heart. Maybe if I slow down, I'll be more articulate. But um, I don't like being pressured by time. But... Uh, so power would be the fourth level where you really are in control. 
i sometimes get a glimpse of that and i get a little bit like that but to really get that all the time you really have to see all the possible vocabulary and all the possible scenarios situations and circumstances it's like almost like taking every every two note combination and seeing it under every chordal context so let me see if i don't want to you see what i'm saying so and you know the sound of it but maybe i i've tried shortcuts in my practice where i just practice this and then i can kind of in, i can kind of foreshadow myself or, or i can what do you say, predict what it would sound like here, 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 and those are all in the major context. What if it's minors, what if the you have to miss, you know, all those contexts. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that. I'm just kind of foreshadowing everything, and I'll keep going down methodically. But, um, okay, so then at the top level, you're one with God. And I guess that's where you get prophecy from this, from music, which... Again, I never saw sources on how to do that. I would think, I think because the bottom level, physical pleasure, is incorporated in the next level with love. I mean, if you're not, if you're just expressing love with music and sometimes it's not swinging so hard, so if, and let me say that because sometimes we play straight eighth music, it's not always swing eighth music, even straight eighth music should swing hard, so to speak, meaning that all the notes are in the right place. When a person has a good time feel and everything's in the right place, so that is a virtue. We're going to get to virtues too. But, uh, so I think maybe the two bottom levels are incorporated in the meaning when you're, when you're logically thinking. So, okay, I see. Okay. So I'm realizing stuff just as I'm going over it. So we've got to swing hard. We've got to play with love. We've got to be logical. Then, I guess with more experience and internalizing the language, then we speak with more power and control. And then, I guess, if a person is fulfilling the seven obligations in the 613, and they are one with God in that way, then I guess the music that one would express uh, could be at such a high level that it could help others obtain prophecy as well as the person themselves. This is high level stuff, but this is this is where music's at. This is where music should be, you know. And I, I I've always been frustrated with music just down those lower levels, and it just don't doesn't do anything for me. And I guess I feel like, you know, and another friend asked me to put my ten favorite albums up, and um, I guess this that kind of pushed this and gave me those like. The coggles kind of moved around and click, and then I said, ah, I got to do this now. So we'll do this first, and I'll read these down. It's like 12 points, but they have subcategories. Let me read them all down to you, and then um, I'll see what else I can say. So, all right, so the how of this, so number one, first, it seems to me that there are six performing arts. Okay, these are the, there, there are three basic ones, and then three that combine they're combinations of the basics. So you have gesticulating, that's like talking with just verbal, uh, nonverbal gestures or whatnot, right? And sign language would probably be a, a form of gesticulating, although it gets now down to the next level. Two is articulating, what I'm doing right now, speaking in the language of English, the verbal language. But sign language is taken from verbal languages right so and they're just signs for for words as opposed to maybe just simple gestures like uh, an ape in a zoo you know they go like this what does that mean you know does that mean they're, they're angry i guess the, the zookeepers the zoologists they watch that and they they've i'm sure they've made lists of 500 symbols you know that an ape uses to speak all right then um and then i call it musicating just to keep them all ing words so gesticulating, articulating, and musicating, meaning speaking the language of music. Okay, then there are combinations of the basics, which are dancing. Dancing is a combination of those gestures with music. Singing is a combination of articulating in verbal language with music. And then acting, which uh, incorporates everything. Um, Okay, and then acting like other people, other things, you know, uh, uh, 
I could do my uh, Christopher Walken impression. That sounds great, but needs more cowbell, right? So, you know, we could be like other people. We could imitate. We could mimic. There are there are. Um, I, I I've broken that down into three categories. There are imitations. Um, the three eyes, imitations, impersonations, and impressions. An imitation is like um, when you imitate an accent from some country. An impersonation is when you actually become another human being. And I see these people that they do, they, someone did, uh, I think it was Zellweger did um, Liza, or was it uh, Judy Garland, uh, right in the movie. So she becomes that person, right? And that's an impersonation. And then impressions are like, um, where I, uh, let's say I have a character, but it's not a specific person, like, uh, let's say, a, a Jewish old man, but it's not a specific person. I say, question. So that would be an impression of some character, right? All right. So you get the point. Then there are six visual arts that I came to, three two-dimensional and three three-dimensional. So the three two-dimensional are sketching, printing, and photographing. So sketching, you know, with a pencil, printing, as we used to do when I was in kindergarten, we used to cut out linoleum prints, and, uh, and you dip the, the print in ink, and then you put it on a paper, so that's printing. And, there, and that's all two-dimensional, the way it looks on the paper. Although, I'll, I'll say something, and I'm trying to clean all this up, too. So, and photo, photography or photographing, so you take a camera and you take a picture of somebody. Then you got three three-dimensional. Painting, pasting, and sculpting. Painting, when you paint, there's a little depth of paint. You know, if you look at any like a Rembrandt, you see there's like depth of paint. So I put it in the three-dimensional category. And I had some artist friends over the years. I checked it with them, and they kind of agreed with me. So, so I'm giving you uh, time-tested, so-called uh, information that I've thought about for years and checked with my friends who are also immersed in the arts and things. Okay. Um, and then sculpting, of course, like clay figures. And, you know, there are Torah laws on these things, too. Supposedly not supposed to make human images. Tune in for my, um, the sharing that I'm going to do, or the, the teaching, whatever, on um, the 613 obligations, because I'm going to talk about, I think there's no making human graven images. Uh, that, you'll hear all that stuff. I don't know how deep I'm going to get with them, because I can only go as far as I know just to give us all a background on that information. Um, okay, hold on a second. Just checking to make sure I'm on. Sorry, I don't wanna keep talking for nothing. All right, guys, hold on. <coughs> all right, now, now we got, um, okay. There seem to be three types of languages used in the performing arts. You got non, number one is nonverbal, which are usually non-aural, A-U-R-A-L, not heard, but seen, like movements, movement, gestures, sign language, gestures, sign language, etc. Then you got two, you got verbal languages, which can, can be written or spoken, right, and heard orally, like English, Spanish, Hebrew, etc. And then you got three non-verbal but oral, like music. It, it, there's, Verbal means that there are references, like um, this is a pen, this is a piano. In music, how do you say that? <laughs> There's no, I once discussed with one of my friends, I even met, I met Michael Brecker before he passed away, I met the Chick Corea, and I asked him this question. I said to Chick, actually, I said, how come, is music, how come music's non, or I, how do you, how do you communicate, I was, I was younger and I was, whatever, I said, how do, how do you communicate a musical if it's non, in music, if it's non-referential, and he said, "Well, like you can't talk." This is his words. He said, "Most exactly, I think, if I remember correctly, he said, um, you can't speak, you can't say the word cat, but you can describe catness, which then opened my mind up to imagery, which I knew from my teacher. I studied with a very fine, te couple of fine teachers." Um, uh, I studied with Vince Maggio down at the University of Miami. I studied with Sanford Gold from New York. He was like the Joe Allard, what Joe Allard was to horn players, uh, uh, Sanford Gold was to piano players. And then I studied with Cy Green, who taught me about stride. I studied with, um, I, I was always a follower. Uh, I always, always had in my mind watching Bill Dobbins. 
he's a teacher i don't forget what college he took taught at but he wrote some books on improvisation and he was very methodical in his approach i like that he had things which i which it made an impression on me so i like that and i i learned from him also sanford gold turned me on to this uh tobias mattei who had a what i i read all his books and the the one thing i learned which doesn't even apply on this piano because on a on a piano with an escapement lever you you press the note down and the and the hammer falls away but not on an electric instrument and that's why i think a lot of acoustic players don't like electric pianos that was like the big argument way back in the 70s or 80s i don't know but um so i read his books tobias mattei and then from knowing that rule and you hold it down you, you you strike with the strong muscles but you hold down with the weak muscles of the finger right and i i've seen pianists uh, who are just so they don't even touch you don't even see their fingers move so much actually there were two pianists i'll mention their names because i love them so much and i i learned so much from just watching them one was um chuck Matsoulis. he was a friend of mine from college he swung so hard, he would practice all day, the sweat would be dripping down him. He, he practiced so much, uh, and he inspired me to, to be a good practicer, God willing, uh, if I could just get to do it. Uh, and then, which is, a dichot what do you call that, uh, the contradiction in terms. But, um, and, then, um, and then Andy Ezrin was a fine pianist. He could play a note. I would stick my ear up to Andy's practice room, and he could make me cry just by playing one note. He just, so... So those were all my teachers and the, my colleagues who were I consider my teachers too because I, I watched them and I and I learned from just watching them. Okay, um, I hope they don't mind me mentioning their names. I don't mean to embarrass anybody. I I, I hope I, I don't know how to take it out. I don't want to take it out of the. Uh, forgive me. I, I hope you guys don't mind me mentioning your names. Um, okay, so then. Um, so I did the three types of languages. So it's nonverbal but oral, right? You hear music, but there's no, ref it's not referential, it's non-referential. So then I wrote number, number three. Songs that are sung combine music with verbal language, with a verbal language. You know, most of our American songbook are, all of me, why not take all of me? I mean, it's a, it's, it's a verbal language, English, with music combined. And these are our songs. That's an important point because it makes us sensitive to other things later on. So then, okay, then uh, English, now this is my own opinion. I thought English is a very thorough verbal and referential language. It, it describes subjects, peoples, people, places, and things doing actions, you know, uh, and can specifically refer to or point to, tell of basically every thought, feeling, saying, and action that man can think, feel, say, and do. Maybe someone might argue with me that English is not so thorough, but I've always felt English, I mean, it's my native tongue, and I've always felt it to be very thorough. I've never been a, for a lack of a word. Maybe sometime for a dramatic effect, I say that, you know, there are no words. <laughs> you are so beautiful. I, 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 I find no words. to. So for dramatic effect, maybe to say that, but I think there are words for every feeling, I think. Um, and there are eight parts of speech in English. And I think they, and I'm studying other languages, mostly verbal and nonverbal, the sign languages, I haven't gotten to it all yet, but uh, I've briefly peroused them to see, peruse, peroused, uh, peruse them, and I, I organize the parts of speech like this. Noun, verb, adjective, which modifies a noun, and adverb, which modifies a verb. This might be helpful to all you English teachers out there. I had some good English teachers, by the way. Uh, then um, pronouns, which substitute for nouns, so I put them there. Then prepositions, which tell relationship for verbs, right? Uh, I searched for the book upstairs or above the house. I searched for it below the house. Those are prepositional phrases, above, below, right? So pronoun, preposition, conjunction, because mostly it can, it, it, I give priority to the nouns. They're the subjects of everything, right? Subjects and predicates. So you, the nouns are the subjects, the predicates are the verbs. So I put conjunctions underneath there. So it's pronoun, preposition, conjunction, interjection. An interjection is an expression of emotion, which kind of is in the category of a verb because you're, ah, you know, I'm expressing emotion. Ah, lady, right? So 
So that's an expression there. That's why I put it like that. Okay, then you got, um, okay, number five. Music is a vaguely referential to non-referential language. It can only ambiguously accomplish all of the above that English can. So here, if I give you an example of this, that's kind of an imagery, and I'm very much into imagery. Some people don't get what I'm trying to accomplish, and I can never explain myself because they, they're not on the same page with the other information, and that's like the, the bulk of it, I think, you know, striving for immortality and fulfilling the purpose of life, and music is a tool to fulfill that purpose properly. The, the songs that we play nowadays, I mean, I'd probably get rid of all of them. They're really not uh, anything that has to do with reality. They're this low-level reality, a low-level perception of reality, maybe just on the physical level, for pleasure seekers. This is how they view life, right? Uh, most of the songs, I, I went through about 6,000 songs and analyzed them, uh, and they either had to do with love, most of them were love, um, a couple of songs had to do with uh, purpose, like uh, what's it all about, Alfie, and then if you went ahead a few generations, we got to that other one, uh, I wrote, I wrote some parodies on these two songs, but um, uh, if God was, is God like one of us, just a slob like one of us? It's am amazing how we went from What's It All About Alfie to that. No offense to this song, I use that song too, I like that song very much, but you know, it, it just shows where our generations are at in our thinking. Music kind of is like a mirror, it, it shows us you know, where we're at. Um, so, so here are the two imageries, right? This might be a dream imagery, and then you got this, which might be like water, right? So me as the, as the musician, as the artist, I have to pick the right imagery of singer singing something. I had a dream, I, I went to the water, <laughs> right? So I would use a different imagery. Now, getting in touch with all that imagery, and I was trying to figure out imagery for all the parts of speech and every word in the language. I was gonna take the English dictionary and take every word and put an imagery, musical imagery next to it. I didn't get to that yet, so you guys can help me if you've got any ideas or whatever. So I'm just throwing this all at you so you think about these things. Um, okay. <coughs> Excuse me, then, uh, okay, when, when in, number six, when English, there are 12 of these, when English or any verbal language, Spanish, French, Italian, Hebrew, Aramaic, etc., is combined with music, Logic seems to dictate, this is my own little insight, well, I, I take no credit for it, everything comes from Hashem, but I, I never heard anyone say this before, uh, publicly at least. It, logic seems to, when you combine those two languages, uh, an English, English, like a verbal language with music, logic seems to dictate that the more referential language, English, is dominant, and the less referential language, music, is subordinate to it, okay? Now, I know some of you might say, well, hey, have you ever listened to Love 94? And they got those, the sax solo, you know, they're playing the, and you hear in the background the singers go, just the two of us, right? And, the, but this, and it's only the sax playing the melody, right? And, and here the verbal language is accompanying the nonverbal. So I thought to myself, really the nonverbal music there, even with its vague referentiality, is now substituting for a lead. It's making you think the lyric, which is another way to approach these songs when there's no singer. When I play, God willing, I've always had this as a goal. I try my best, I gotta learn all the lyrics to every song I play. I try to make the listener, I know that I play these, these songs, you know, from the 40s and the 50s, and these older people, they know the lyrics, and they're singing along, and if I mess up, hey, that's not the right lyric, because they know in their head, you played the wrong note there, it's not the lyric. You know, the lyric has its melody that goes along with it. So I think, back to that example, the saxophone is actually taking the place of a singer. We'll go into more of that another time, but I just wanted to show you that I thought of it. Number seven, it seems to me that our two responsibilities as musicians when playing songs that combine a verbal language with music are to, one, convey the message of the lyric, and two, climax help bring the piece logically and naturally, organically to its goal, okay? Then number eight, every note that we play must help to accomplish these two goals. So when I mean to convey, you know, my, my teacher, Mr. Maggio, used to say, he'd say the word cold, you know, he'd go, cold, and he'd really, 
accent the C in such a way where you'd feel cold, right? That's the way to sing, I think. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know any other way. I really don't know anything that's more logical. That is the best way. <clears throat> Part of this, you know, I also, I wanted to, just like I battle, I battle pleasure seeking, I want to try to battle aimless rambling in the music industry. Sometimes there's so much aimless rambling, it doesn't make any sense. I've got to turn everything off. I can't listen anymore because it's just, it's just like they're wasting my time. Either you convey or climax or you're bothering and boring, right? You're either, you're either conveying the, the message to me and climaxing and it's growing to something or else you're bothering me by wasting my, my time. I'm listening to you but you're not saying anything or you're boring me because you're not building to any climax. So it's the C's over the B's. Either conveying climax, always conveying climax, and don't do do convey climax. Don't bother and bore. Okay, that's a little message for us musicians to always think about. Um, these are my opinions. You know, if you disagree with me, so tell me why you disagree. Be polite. But I put my whole heart into this. I spent 54 years thinking about this, talking to many musicians, playing on many a bandstand many songs, tried to always find the exceptional song to the rule, and, and this is what I've come up with. Um, okay, now, when a verbal, uh, every, I'm sorry, number eight, and every note that we play must help to accomplish these two, these two goals of conveying and climaxing. Number nine, when a verbal language combines with music, ten areas of focus seem to present themselves. Okay, and this is just what I thought of. I had to break down a song, you know, I break down this all of me, I gotta look at all its parts. So you got the issue of the song, two, the, one is the issue, two is the message, three is the mood, four is the style, five is the lyric, six is the, are the intervallic variables, I call them IVs, pitch and the distance between any two, voice leading the note or notes between any starting note uh, and any goal note. Okay, then you got I'll explain all these another time, I'm just throwing them out there. <laughs> Seven sound variables, SVs I call them, timbre, dynamics, and duration. Duration. Then you got eight is are the rhythmic variables, the RVs. I call them you know, subdivision and meter. And then you got nine are the chordal variables. You got uh, CVs. Uh, okay, so the first, those six through, 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 six through eight were melody. And once you have the lyrics, now you have its melody that it's attached to, right? And then you have the next uh, two are accompaniment, that which supports the melody. You have nine is chordal variables, CVs, which are anywhere from two notes to ten notes uh, that I can play. You can have an orchestra that can play you know, probably 40 notes at a time. But me, I can, as a pianist, I can only play ten notes. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And then you got number ten, arrangement. The arrangement, uh, which includes five accompaniment methods. Now... I learned this actually uh, from my, all my teachers, uh, pretty much that Bill Dobbins had, he wrote it out in a book. You got, um, you got walking bass lines, right? Um, right, and then you got, um, these are the things you can do underneath a melody. You got, uh, so uh, I call that walk bass lines. Two is, our, that's number one, two is arpeggiate. Um, uh, chord number three is chordiate, I call it, because you're playing chords. Right? And then you got four, moving inner voices. My, my teacher, Mr. Maggio, was a master at this. You got to balance the notes. The moving note, you might want to be softer. Right? Okay, then you got... Uh, Strideate or stride. I try to make the suffixes all match, but uh, so, so let's see. Uh, let's see. All right, so that's stride piano. Yeah, that kind of a thing. And then, uh, all right, let's see. I don't have too much time. I got to get to a class at five o'clock. I want to go hear my Rav uh, speak and teach Torah. But um, okay, let's see here. One more, hold on. Make sure I'm on. Hold on, guys. All right, hang in there. All right. Uh, <clears throat> okay. 
number ten the more that we as musicians creators of works of art perfect our control over these ten areas of focus that i just mentioned the better chance we have of giving each and every listener what i call the ttt the transcendental tingle the feeling of awe chills up the spine an experience of god perfection that a listener experiences when he or she is moved by a work of art you know it's funny you think when i practice piano i'm trying to get such a work of art i should do the same thing with my speeches i know my rub goes over his lectures before he tells them and i don't <laughs> I, 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 I do go over them to a degree, but I guess I don't know if I'm at the level where I can do that yet, you know, review, I, I, whatever, I'm, I review the topics, I've reviewed these topics before I spoke about them, uh, and I guess I've lived them for so long, I'm hoping that I can teach them without any fumfering, excuse me, okay, then, um, so that's number 10. Number 11, as a musician, we should strive to exhibit the following six virtues, which sum up our control over the ten areas of focus. When playing any piece through our instrument, I call them also the six R's. Okay, these are six virtues. When I'm sitting in an audience, whether I pay to see the performance or not, I usually think to myself, I, I, I not to rate them, to, uh, what do I call I don't grade them, but I... Um, I take an assessment in my mind. Okay, number one is ready. I'll just read them down. Ready, relevant, reasonable, rational, responsible, and righteous. So number one, what does ready mean? That means all the vocabulary and grammar are mastered. Does the person seem like they've mastered all the vocabulary and grammar? Two, are they relevant? We only play what relates to the piece that we are playing to help convey its message. Sometimes you hear it. Some people are, are guilty of this. They, they ramble aimlessly. They start a beautiful piece, but they just want to play the chord changes. So they, they, they abolish, they abandon the melody completely, and they go off to who knows where, and I can't follow them. I, don't, I lose my focus, and I get, I get tired, and I go to sleep. So, so that's, to be relevant is very important. And, and anything we do, even when we speak, you know, if someone talked to you in English, and they were talking something like talking about something and they, then they spoke about elephants if it didn't have any bearing on the situation if it wasn't related to the topic you would be uncomfortable with them you say hey man what are you talking about irrelevant topics for right so can you believe that that's what it is in music but no one says anything because it's a non-referential language or a vaguely referential language so no one really can complain about it you understand what i'm saying but yet i always knew that there was more meaning to music than is being utilized and exhibited and displayed in performances. And that's why I thought to share this because I know we, we, can, we, can, we should and could play on higher levels. I was talking to a friend and he said, uh, you know, you talk about to tell me, you talk about becoming immortal and this and that. I think maybe it's too high a level for us to achieve. I said, are you kidding? We're just one free will choice away from from being immortal. All you gotta do is choose to do the right thing and do it on a level where it pleases Hashem on the highest level. And you just keep working on yourself. It's like per perfecting your performance of in the musical language, right? So the same thing with this, uh, it's not too high to reach. It's something that can be achieved. That's why I'm mentioning it. Um, all right, so then three, reasonable. We develop everything logically and organically. And I divided those into three categories. You know, there are those, the, for you classical musicians, you know of the, uh, the classical um, melodic development devices, which my teacher, Mr. Maggio, was very uh, particular about teaching us. Uh, I went ahead and divided them into just three categories. Um, you know, you have uh, augmentation, diminution, all those. Uh, you, add, you play something and then you add to it. Let's see. 